All right, today we're gonna to talk about cardiovascular. Before we talk about the exam itself, let's just talk ever so briefly about the stethoscope. So a stethoscope, the prongs face forward and you put them into your ears facing forward. You never put it backwards. Sometimes in uh, TV shows, you'll see people put these in backwards and you don't wanna do that because it just looks like you're a poser and you don't know what you're doing and you won't be able to hear anything. Second thing is that most stethoscopes will have two sides. So this is called the diaphragm. This is called the bell. Diaphragm is used for higher pitched, louder sounds. The bell is used for lower pitched, softer sounds and it'll be able to twist. So when it twists, you might not be able to see it on the camera, but there's a little hole right there. Whichever direction that hole is facing is the side that's gonna be active. So before you start listening to your patient, you might wanna very gently tap or just visually look for to see which side that hole is facing. Nothing more embarrassing than listening to the patient for a good 30 seconds and then realizing you're not hearing anything because you've got it the wrong side. Another thing is that this should generally be kept in your pocket, not around your neck, because sometimes patients might want to strangle you with it, and it's just going to be colder when it's left out on your neck. So by keeping it in your pocket, you're less likely to just take it off because it's irritating your neck, put it down and it walks away. And it's also going to just be warmer so your patient doesn't feel as cold. So posers keep it around their neck, cool people keep it in their pocket. All right, now, when it comes to assessing the patient, there's some general things you can do in terms of general survey and all that. We covered that in the lecture. We're gonna go straight for the heart of the matter. So when we listen to the heart, you're gonna need your patient's, you're gonna need your stethoscope, and you're gonna place it on the patient. You move your hair back, please. So we're gonna place it is second intercostal space, right sternal border, then left intercostal space, second intercostal space, left sternal border, then down one, down one, and then over and up. Now, that fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line, is actually underneath the breast tissue. So you notice that you have to lift up into the breast. Um, sometimes you'll have to have the patient lift their own breast or maybe raise their arm up in the air. Both of those techniques can get the breast tissue out of the way. Even on a man, you don't want to just place it straight in. You want to go under and scoop upwards. So when you're listening with your stethoscope, if you're not hearing anything, then it, chances are you're not actually in the right spot. You might be too low, you might be on the breast, or sorry, on the bra, or you might be listening to the breast tissue and not underneath the breast tissue. So all those things you have to take into account when you're auscultating. So. All right, once you've listened all the way down, we're gonna turn it over, with, use the bell, and we're gonna go back up. All right, now when you use the bell, you wanna use very light pressure. So with the diaphragm, you're gonna use firm pressure, and then with the bell, you wanna use very, very light pressure, but you wanna make sure this is a good seal, so you're not like this, it needs to be on the patient's chest, but not pressing down. If you press down, it's gonna end up essentially forming a diaphragm. So it defeats the purpose of using the bell. So we went down with the diaphragm, we went back up with the bell. And what you're hearing is you're gonna be hearing kind of boom, 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 boom. Now those two sounds are S1 and S2. The first sound is S1, the second sound is S2. And S2 is formed by the semilunar valves, which are at the base, so it's gonna be the top. The S1 sound is formed by the um, mitral, and bicusp or mitral and tricuspid valves, which are at the base. So what that means is at the top, you're gonna to hear boom, 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 boom. And then at the bottom, you're gonna hear boom, 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 because you're gonna hear louder or softer, depending where you're listening. So at this time, we're gonna ask the patient to lie down. Lie down, please. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna listen again, but now with the patient lying. And sometimes you're gonna hear different sounds sitting versus lying. If at first you don't hear the, the heart sound, 
Then just shift a little bit because chances are you're lifting directly over the rib. All right, so the reason why we're using the bell on the way back up is that we're listening for murmurs that might be softer than the heart sounds themselves. If you hear additional heart sounds, S3 or S4 sounds, then you're gonna note that on your documentation. So that's it for the heart exam. At this time, we're going to proceed and do the peripheral vascular exam. So the first part of it for the uh, peripheral vascular exam is to auscultate the patient's carotid arteries. And you always, always, always auscultate them before you palpate them. The reason is that if there's a brewery or a plaque there, then you palpate, it could break that brewery loose. So by auscultating first, you're less likely for that to occur. So we're going to use the diaphragm. I'm just going to place it gently on the patient's artery. Now we're going to listen to their abdominal pulses. Please bring your shirt up. So here we have the patient's costal margin and there's the umbilicus. So just below the costal margin we have the aorta. Then just a little bit lower to the sides, we have the renal arteries. And then from the umbilicus going 45 degree angle outwards, we have the iliac arteries. And then just inside the iliac crest, we have femoral arteries. All right, so we've auscultated the abdominal arteries and at this point, we're ready to go ahead and palpate arteries. So to do the carotid, you're going to use three fingers and you're going to place it on the trachea gently, not pushing down, but just gently. And then you're going to slide inside the sternocleidomastoid. You do one side at a time, because if you do both at the same time, you might have the patient pass out. So you're pushing, you're pressing in like this. Now, you may have learned to list to feel up here like this, and that works because you're that's actually external carotid, and that feeds the facial muscles. That works when you're exercising because you've got a lot of blood vessel, a lot of blood moving, so you can feel that. But on a patient, especially one who has a weak heartbeat, you might not be able to feel it that way. So that you're going, you're going deep into the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Next, we're going to do radial arteries. And we're looking for symmetry with those. You can palpate the, um, the femoral arteries, but the thing that's important with the femoral is this is a little bit intimate and we're not going to do it on each other. So we're not doing it with our classmates. But that doesn't mean you go, femoral arteries. I see, patients, I see students do that a lot. They're like, femoral arteries. No, that means you don't know where they are. So femoral artery. And then you can also do popliteal, but again, I see most students do this incorrectly, and there's no real reason to do it because if the patient has pedal pulses, then they've got popliteal pulses. So we're gonna skip those, and we're gonna move down to pedal pulses. On the feet, um, in addition to the pulses, we also want to assess the patient's warmth. So you can assess the warmth moving down both feet. Sometimes patients will have kind of like a stocking of coldness below a certain level, and that's an indication they have poor circulation in that from there downwards. Also, you can assess whether the patient has foot or toe hair. Loss of toe hair is a sign of poor circulation. Now, as far as the pulses themselves, the first one is called posterior tibial. So this is the medial malleolus of the tibia. So behind that is where you would feel it. Sometimes you'll have to start backwards and pull forwards. Sometimes you'll, have to, you'll feel it underneath more than behind. So you might have to play around with where you feel that. And then what you wanna do is assess both at the same time. The other is called the pedal pulse, or dorsalis pedis, which means top of the foot. So here's the first metatarsal and second metatarsal. So it's gonna be between those two metatarsals somewhere in there. So you can start at the toe and basically work your way up until you feel it. 
So sometimes what you'll feel, uh, what you'll see when you go into a hospital room is you'll see a circle on their foot. And that circle means that's where the nurse before them, before you found it. So they won't have to do that process again. Oh, that's where it was. So again, once you find one, you want to find the other and feel at the same time, they should be symmetrical. We mentioned during skin that you can do capillary refill and you can also do capillary refill on the feet. Um, when you do it on the feet, instead of being less than two seconds, it'll be less than three seconds. We can't do it on her at the moment because she's got pink nails. So this little um, protuberance right here is the manubrial sternal angle. So it's where the, the sternum body connects to the manubrium. So that little, that little bulge right there corresponds with the second rib. So when you're looking for the intercostal space, you can palpate that on the patient, and then right next to it is that first rib, and you should be listening just underneath that. So when we listen to the aortic valve, we're gonna listen in the right intercostal space, second intercostal, sorry. So when we auscultate the aortic, the aortic valve, we're going to be on the right sternal border second intercostal space, so just below that little protuberance. Then for the aortic valve, we'll switch to the other side, and then for the herbs point or second pulmonic, we'll be one, one down. Then for the tricuspid, we'll be one down again. And then for the mitral valve, we're gonna go one down and then over to midclavicular line. So it's a little bit over, it's not a lot bit over. So make sure you're not auscultating way down here. So that's where we're gonna be auscultating for the different heart valves. Okay, here on the Thin Man, we're gonna do a little bit of additional demonstration of where things are anatomically. So one thing that people have a tendency to think of is that your lungs are way out here on the side. And in fact, your heart and your lungs are very, very, very close together. So if you think about it, your lungs can only be this wide. So your heart is only pumping this far in either direction to get to your lungs. Next, we have this right here is your diaphragm, and you'll notice where it lives, pretty much right where the costal margin is. So everything below costal margin is considered abdomen, everything above costal margin is considered thorax. And then also notice in terms of the umbilicus, we have, so here's the umbilicus right there. So, this is upper and this is lower. So in the upper quadrant, we have the transverse intestines and we also have the stomach, we have the liver and we have the spleen up in here. And then for lower is pretty much all intestine and then whatever pelvic anatomy a person has in terms of bladder and ovaries. Okay, so notice that right here is where the umbilicus is, and that's pretty much where the aorta splits into the iliac arteries. And notice that here's the costal margin approximately here. So when you auscultate for the aorta, you need to be a little bit lower than the costal margin, and then just a little bit lower into the side for the renal arteries. Then here's the umbilicus. You need to be listening down 45 degree angle. I see a lot of people trying to listen straight out to the side. The only thing you're listening to there is bowel. You're not listening to the patient's iliac artery right here. Then here is the anterior iliac crest right here. And notice that just a little bit there, that's where you're trying to listen for the femoral artery. Boo! <laughs> Now let's talk about documentation for the cardiovascular exam. So the first thing we did was the heart. So we started with auscultating the heart and normal heart sounds are S1, S2. And now think about the rhythm of the, of the heart sound. It probably should have been regular, so regular rate and rhythm. And then you shouldn't not have heard any murmurs, gallops, or rubs. So we can say no M G R. And there's pretty much a normal heart exam. The next part is the cardio, the peripheral cardiovascular system. So what did you auscultate? Well, you auscultated some, some arteries and you should not have heard bruies. So you're gonna say where you didn't hear bruies. So we'll say carotid, aorta, renal, iliac, and femoral. 
Now think about what you did next. You palpated. So the, pal the pulses are graded from zero to plus four. And upper body, they're usually a plus two is normal. So plus two bilaterally. And we palpated carotid radial dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial. Then the last thing is any other assessments that you did for the peripheral. So we could say capillary refill and you'd say the number of seconds. Less than two is considered normal. So let's say in this case it was one second. And then you would also say if there's any ch changes in colors, in color, warmth, loss of toe hair, anything else that you did. Um, one of the important things is checking for edema. And in our case, there was no edema. So that is a normal cardiovascular exam being documented.